demon. Meghan made an awkward with Archbishop and say never come back UK again. Meghan Markle is claimed to not be heading to the UK anytime soon after rumours the royal couple could return to christen Lilibet Diana. Meghan Markle, 40, and Prince Harry, 36, plan to introduce Lilibet Diana to the Queen later this year, The Sun reported. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex reportedly asked the monarch to meet with plans to host a christening for their four-month-old. But royal commentator Christina Garibaldi does not think Meghan is heading over any time soon. Speaking on Us Weekly's Royal Us podcast, Ms Garibaldi said, I don't think Meghan is really going to be heading over there any time soon. I think they're going to keep everything pretty private. Who knows, they may have even done the christening because we haven't seen any photos or Meghan at all. Co-host Molly Mulshine added, also Jonathan Sacerdotti alluded last week to their claim that their wedding was held three days before the wedding with the Archbishop of Canterbury. The Archbishop said that that didn't happen and he's head of the Church of England. That does make it a little awkward, I think. Coming over to have her christened in the Church of England. Her comments come after Meghan said nobody knew that the couple shared personal vows for just the two of us ahead of their eagerly anticipated wedding day in Windsor on May 19, 2018. It was thought it could not have been a legal ceremony as it lacked witnesses and a registered venue, and was instead likely to have been an informal exchange of vows. The Archbishop of Canterbury has since addressed for the first time the remark made by the Duchess of Sussex that she got married three days before her grand royal wedding. In an interview with La Republica, Mr. Welby was asked about what happened and he said the legal wedding was on the Saturday, adding, but I won't say what happened at any other meetings. The Archbishop told the Italian newspaper, if any of you ever talk to a priest, you expect them to keep that talk confidential. It doesn't matter who I'm talking to. I had a number of private and pastoral meetings with the Duke and Duchess before the wedding. The legal wedding was on the Saturday. I signed the wedding certificate, which is a legal document, and I would have committed a serious criminal offence if I signed it knowing it was false. During the interview, Meghan told Winfrey, you know, three days before our wedding we got married. No one knows that, but we called the Archbishop and we just said, look, this thing, this spectacle, is for the world, but we want our union between us. She said the vows they have framed are just the two of us in our backyard with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Both Harry and Meghan said it was just the three of us. Prince Charles' plans for a stripped-down monarchy became the firing line for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who felt that their son should have been given a royal title, claims a royal expert. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were reportedly offended by Prince Charles's desire to slim down the monarchy after ascending the throne, according to a royal commentator. Neil Sean claimed that the plans to reduce the number of working royals caused the Sussexes to realise how far down the pecking order they would become in the future of the British monarchy. Royal commentator Neil Sean alleged, this is apparently what really offended Prince Harry and the then actress Meghan Markle. This is because his plans, Prince Charles, for a stripped-down monarchy were let slip to the once royal couple. They then realized just how far down the pecking order they would become, particularly under the King Charles reign. So let me explain, as we know, thank you to the 1917 Act, Her Majesty was able to give titles to all of Prince William's children and naturally, as you can imagine, Meghan Markle along with Prince Harry, felt that baby Archie would receive a prince title. Even though as we've said many times on the show before, titles mean nothing to people like Meghan Markle. After all she's used to celebrity, clearly forgetting that we're not talking celebrity, we're talking the British monarchy. This apparently was the firing line and one of those heated conversations, we're not quite sure whether it was between Prince Harry, Prince Harry, and Meghan, or simply Prince Harry and Charles together but whatever, that was really the tipping point of where they felt they would always be below in the pecking order of the British monarchy. Prince Charles has made it clear since the 1990s that he believes in modernizing the monarchy, which would include reducing the number of royals who are dependent on the sovereign grant. The future king has placed a heavy emphasis on a core group of senior royals, including Prince William and Prince George, who are in direct line to the throne. 
During the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, they spoke of their confusion at the decision to not grant their son, Archie Harrison, a royal title. At the time of Archie's birth in 2019, it was announced that he would be styled as Master Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, with no royal title attached to his name. Reports at the time suggested that the couple had opted not to give him a title, in order to provide a more normal upbringing. However, the Sussexes later claimed that the decision was taken out of their hands. Under royal rules laid down by King George V in the letters patent, Archie will be entitled to become a HRH when the Prince of Wales becomes the king, and therefore he would be a grandchild of the monarch. Only Prince George, who in the direct line of succession, was originally entitled to be a prince. However, the Queen stepped in to ensure that all the Cambridge children would be on equal footing. Meghan Markle told Oprah, they didn't want him to be a prince or princess, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from protocol, and, said, that he wasn't going to receive security. Whilst the Duchess said she understood the downside of being granted a royal title, she continued, I have a lot of clarity on what comes with the titles, good and bad, and, from my experience, a lot of pain. I wouldn't wish pain on my child, but that is their birthright to then make a choice about. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced they would be stepping away from the royal family in January 2020. Since then, they have relocated to California, where they currently reside in Montecito with their two children, Archie Harrison and Lilibet Diana. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are reportedly being ignored by palace staff who are shocked over the sheer nerve over their proposed visit to the UK to visit the Queen. The Duke of Duchess of Sussex are said to be planning a return to the UK in a matter of weeks and want to have Lilibet christened at Windsor Castle. It would be the first time Her Majesty would meet four-month-old Lilibet, who is her youngest great-grandchild and named after her. But it is rumoured Meghan and Harry have been ignored by palace staff who are shocked by the request after the couple's behavior since leaving the UK in March 2020. A source said, Harry and Meghan have made this offer but a lot of people are shocked by the sheer nerve of it. They may genuinely want to see the Queen but it's breathtaking given what they've put her through this year. Her Majesty's staff have not responded so far. In fact, there has also been discussion about Christmas, and whether an invitation should be sent to Harry and Meghan, after they spurned one last year. The Queen is still very fond of Harry, and would love to see Lilibet and her brother Archie. But courtiers are surprised by the move, especially from Meghan, after what has happened. The visit would be Harry's third return to the UK, and Meghan's first since the couple renounced royal duties in Megxit. They added, the Queen is still very fond of Harry, and would love to see Lilibet and her brother Archie. But courtiers are surprised by the move, especially from Meghan, after what has happened. The Sussexes did not attend Christmas last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. And in 2019, they spent Christmas in Canada instead of with the royal family. Senior staff are said to be shocked by the couple's interest to spend Christmas with the Queen, months after the couple blasted the royal family in an interview with Oprah Winfrey. Harry has recently made Olive Branch calls to his family as he and Meghan hope to have a christening for their four-month-old daughter possibly at Windsor Castle. We recently revealed how Her Majesty was exasperated with attacks by the Sussexes. The monarchy is also braced for the release of Harry's memoir next year, with The Sun on Sunday telling how the Queen is getting lawyered up against any new claims. In April, Harry returned to the UK alone for Grandad Prince Philip's funeral. Biographer Omid Scobie says Harry met the Queen privately twice during his stay. He last appeared in the UK in July to unveil a statue to Mum Diana. Harry's conciliatory calls are thought to include conversations with Dad Charles and brother William. Though the Queen may still be fond of her grandson she may respond to his upcoming book with an insult, royal experts claimed earlier this year. She may insult the couple by depriving them of a reaction, they added. In July, Ingrid Seward, the editor of Majesty magazine, said she doesn't see the Sussexes attending Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in London next year. She said the Queen won't react to the situation, because she would be playing into Harry and Meghan's hands. Despite tensions with his brother and father, 
Prince Harry has always maintained a strong relationship with the Queen, insisting she's still his Colonel-in-Chief. When the Sussexes stepped back from royal duties last year, it was reported that the news had blindsided the Queen, but the Duke has always insisted he has too much respect for his grandmother to make the decision without consulting her. Royal experts said last month that while it would have caught the British public off guard, it is likely that the monarch planned for that very eventuality. During a bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey, the Queen was one of the only members of the royal family spared from Harry's criticism. He claimed brother Prince William was trapped by the royal system and told the world his dad Prince Charles had cut him off financially. Bringing Lilibet to UK in weeks to meet Queen. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have offered to introduce the Queen to her namesake great-granddaughter Lilibet in the coming weeks, it has been reported. Despite reported fractures between Prince Harry and his brother Prince William and other royal family members, the Duke of Sussex is said to still be on good terms with Her Majesty. There have also reportedly been several olive branch calls to the palace after the fallout from the Oprah interview. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have asked the Queen if they can fly in so Lilibet, who's just four months old, so she can meet her. This would be Harry's third return to the UK, and Meghan's first since the couple renounced royal duties in March 2020. Insiders say Harry has been calling home in preparation of Lilibet's christening, with Windsor Castle being touted as a possible venue. Royal sources told the publication that courtiers are shocked by the sheer nerve of the request to see Her Majesty. A source said, Harry and Meghan have made this offer but a lot of people are shocked by the sheer nerve of it. They may genuinely want to see the Queen but it's breathtaking given what they've put her through this year. Her Majesty's staff have not responded so far. In fact there has also been discussion about Christmas, and whether an invitation should be sent to Harry and Meghan, after they spurned one last year. The source added the Queen is very fond of Prince Harry and would love the opportunity to see her great-grandchildren Archie and Lilibet. The Sussexes, now based in California, welcomed Lilibet in June, but it's unknown whether they asked the Queen for permission to use her nickname to name her. Though the Queen may still be fond of her grandson she may respond to his upcoming tell-all book with an insult, royal experts claimed earlier this year. She may insult the couple by depriving them of a reaction, they added. In July, Ingrid Seward, the editor of Majesty magazine, said she doesn't see the Sussexes attending Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in London next year. She said the Queen won't react to the situation, because she would be playing into Harry and Meghan's hands. Despite tensions with his brother and father, Prince Harry has always maintained a strong relationship with the Queen, insisting she's still his Colonel-in-Chief. When the Sussexes stepped back from royal duties last year, it was reported that the news had blindsided the Queen, but the Duke has always insisted he has too much respect for his grandmother to make the decision without consulting her. Royal experts said last month that while it would have caught the British public off guard, it is likely that the monarch planned for that very eventuality. During a bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey, the Queen was one of the only members of the royal family spared from Harry's criticism. He claimed brother Prince William was trapped by the royal system and told the world his dad Prince Charles had cut him off financially. Since Harry and wife Meghan left the UK at the beginning of 2020, Harry has only returned twice, for the funeral of Prince Philip in April and for the unveiling of a statue of his mother Princess Diana in July. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are reportedly keen to visit the Queen in the coming months to introduce their daughter Lilibet to her great-grandmother. The Sun revealed the Sussexes had now offered to fly into London to see the Queen, which will be the Duchess' first trip to the UK since Megxit. And a source has since said it is unclear if the couple will spend Christmas with the Queen after not spending the past two celebrations apart. The Sussexes did not attend Christmas last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. And in 2019, they spent Christmas in Canada instead of with the royal family. Moreover, a damning poll has revealed Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's popularity with Brits has plunged to a record low. According to a YouGov survey, only 26% of Brits favour Meghan while 65% dislike her.
For Harry, just 34% say they like him compared to 59% who don't, taking the prince's net favorability rating to minus 25%. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are claimed to be desperate for their daughter to be christened in the UK with the Queen by their side. Lilibet Diana is the Sussex's second child and according to reports the couple have put in a formal request to visit the Queen so she can meet her 11th great-grandchild. Meghan and Harry have had a somewhat strained relationship with the royal family since they stepped down as working royals, but Harry is said to remain close to his grandmother and want his daughter to be christened in Windsor. Lilibet, is affectionately known as Lily, is named after her great-grandmother's pet name and after Harry's mum Diana. She was born in a hospital in Santa Barbara, California in June, but with no date yet set, speculation is mounting that, with travel still problematic, they may just decide to do it in America. The Sussexes were emphatic that they intended to do things their own way, one source said, and time is ticking. Whatever happens, a closed-door christening is almost a certainty and some are speculating that we may not even know it's happening. The Sussexes still haven't offered even a glimpse of what their daughter looks like, and the chances of a Windsor return seem to be lessening as the days rumble on. Here's all we know so far about Lilibet's big day. When will Lilibet be christened? No date has yet been set, but speculation is naturally swirling. The Sussex's son Archie Harris and Mountbatten Windsor was baptized in front of close family and friends in the private chapel at Windsor Castle in July 2019. He was two months old when the service was held. Lilibet is already older than Archie was when he was christened, so it is understandable that the couple are keen to confirm a date. Where will it happen? As of last month, Harry and Meghan were said to be planning for Lilibet to be christened at Windsor in front of the Queen. The Duke of Sussex made his intentions clear and saw a return to the UK as a wonderful opportunity to build some bridges. Harry told people that they want to have Lily christened at Windsor, just like her brother, a royal source said. They are happy to wait until circumstances allow. But a month on, the silence has brought about speculation that the couple may need to make other plans. Could it be held in the US? According to one top royal commentator, that is looking increasingly likely. Richard Fitzwilliams told that there is a high possibility that she will be christened in California, and not the UK as they first hoped. He said, it must be likely that she will be christened in California though there were rumors of a possible christening at Windsor. Harry and Meghan's relations with the British press went badly downhill when Archie was christened in private and the names of the godparents were not released. Will the Queen attend? Prince Harry is reportedly desperate for his grandmother to be there this time. A prior engagement meant the Queen was forced to miss Archie's christening two years ago. But royal experts say it puts her in a difficult position as the head monarch would not always attend celebrations for those low in the line for the throne. The Queen was not present at Louis, the third child of Prince William and Kate Middleton. What about royal tradition? If the couple are to stick with tradition, Lilibet is likely to be christened within the next few weeks. While there is no specified minimum or maximum age to have a royal child christened, many services happen within three months of the birth. Children of the royal family are christened following the holy baptism of the Church of England, of which the Queen is the supreme governor. Where did Archie's christening take place? Archie was christened by the Archbishop of Canterbury in a private ceremony on July 6, 2019. He was two months old when the service took place in the private chapel at Windsor Castle. The whole day was very hush-hush, the Duke and Duchess exclude the press and chose not to reveal the names of Archie's godparents. The event came six months before the couple stepped down as working members of the royal family to start a new life in America. Paul Burrell has claimed the Queen is ready to fight back against Prince Harry's autobiography. The Duke of Sussex, who alongside his wife Meghan Markle quit as working royals last year, is set to release an autobiography next year, which will document the experiences, adventures, losses and life lessons that have helped shape him into who he is today. And now Paul has said the Queen is lawyering up and is ready to take on Harry and Meghan when his autobiography gets released. He told, the Queen lawyering up is totally unprecedented, it's her way of saying, enough is enough now. The Queen is a warm, fair, loyal, forgiving, compassionate woman, 
but if you cross her more than once, or tell her lies, you lose her respect. And it seems things have gone too far, Harry and Meghan show no signs of stopping the missiles. Back in the day, the never complain, never explain rule could work, and it added to the mystery and privacy of the royals. Nowadays, with how quickly news travels and social media, it simply can't work, especially given Harry and Meghan's allegations. And Paul claims the monarch is apprehensive about what could come next from Harry and Meghan, who now reside in California. He added, this constant drip of information from across the Atlantic, which seems never-ending, has the potential to do an awful lot of damage to both the monarchy and her family. He said that he suspects the Queen is apprehensive about what could come next from her grandson and his wife, and that she could be forced to fight back. Harry vowed his first memoir will show how much he has in common with others, despite his royal status. I'm writing this not as the prince I was born but as the man I have become, he said in a statement. I've worn many hats over the years, both literally and figuratively, and my hope that in telling my story, the highs and lows, the mistakes, the lessons learned, I can help show that no matter where we come from, we have more in common than we think. He also explained how he was deeply grateful to share what he's learned. I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to share what I've learned over the course of my life so far and excited for people to read a first-hand account of my life that's accurate and wholly truthful, he added. Another news, when Princess Diana died in Paris 24 years ago, Prince Charles and the Queen, reportedly argued about how her body should be brought back to the UK. Princess Diana died in a car accident on August 31, 1997, 24 years ago today. At the time, her two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry were staying at Balmoral Castle with their father and other members of the royal family. Prince Charles and Diana's relationship had ended and the couple had finalized their divorce the year before, 1996. Despite this, the Prince of Wales decided to go to Paris to bring his ex-wife's body back to the UK using the royal family's plane. It was a decision that reportedly caused a rift within the royal family as initially, the Queen did not accept Prince Charles' request to go to Paris. Richard Kay, a journalist, and friend of Princess Diana's, previously told Channel 5 in the royal family documentary, Diana, Seven Days That Shook the Windsors that, this was a surprising and brave move, from Prince Charles. The journalist elaborated, Charles wanted to take the royal flight to Paris but the Queen wouldn't allow it. Charles fought harder for Diana than he had ever fought for her in her lifetime. Ultimately the Queen backed down and Prince Charles did go to Paris with Princess Diana's sisters, Lady Jane Fellows, and Lady Sarah McCorkadale, to collect her body and bring her home. The group travelled to Petit Salpetriere Hospital in Paris and brought her home the same day on the evening of August 31, 1997. At the request of Prince Charles, Princess Diana's coffin was draped with the royal standard, a flag that is used to commemorate members of the royal family. Funeral arrangements were quickly made and Princess Diana's funeral was held on September 6, 1997. Princess Diana was not given a state funeral but instead, a royal ceremonial funeral was held that included a one-hour and forty-seven-minute funeral procession through the streets of London. Prince Charles and his sons Prince Harry, who was thirteen at the time, and Prince William, who was fifteen, walked behind Princess Diana's hearse for the long procession. Prince Harry has since reflected on this moment and told Newsweek, My mother had just died, and I had to walk a long way behind her coffin, surrounded by thousands of people watching me while millions more did on television. I don't think any child should be asked to do that, under any circumstances. I don't think it would happen today. Prince Charles' plans for a stripped-down monarchy became the firing line for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who felt that their son should have been given a royal title, claims a royal expert. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were reportedly offended by Prince Charles's desire to slim down the monarchy after ascending the throne, according to a royal commentator. Neil Sean claimed that the plans to reduce the number of working royals caused the Sussexes to realize how far down the pecking order they would become in the future of the British monarchy. Royal commentator Neil Sean alleged, this is apparently what really offended Prince Harry and the then actress Meghan Markle, 
This is because his plans, Prince Charles, for a stripped-down monarchy were let slip to the once royal couple. Robert Lacey, acclaimed historian and royal consultant to the Crown, claims that the Duchess of Sussex was angered by the multiple changes that her father-in-law has planned for when he takes over the throne after Queen Elizabeth. Lacey's book Battle of Brothers reveals, in pursuing his own cause of the slimmed-down monarchy, Prince Charles had been making noises about limiting the number of HRHs created by George V's 1917 convention still further, thus cutting out Archie from his future princeship, and Meghan took that personally. No wonder Meghan cried foul. The media explanation of why Charles had stopped taking Harry's calls was all about money, the long-suffering father was apparently tired of being treated like a cash dispenser, as one royal source put it, but there were more profound issues at stake, Lacey added, referencing Harry's claims during the Oprah interview about Charles freezing him out. They then realized just how far down the pecking order they would become, particularly under the King Charles reign. So let me explain, as we know, thank you to the 1917 Act, Her Majesty was able to give titles to all of Prince William's children and naturally, as you can imagine, Meghan Markle along with Prince Harry, felt that baby Archie would receive a prince title. Even though as we've said many times on the show before, titles mean nothing to people like Meghan Markle. After all she's used to celebrity, clearly forgetting that we're not talking celebrity, we're talking the British monarchy. This apparently was the firing line and one of those heated conversations, we're not quite sure whether it was between Prince Harry, Prince Harry, and Meghan, or simply Prince Harry and Charles together but whatever, that was really the tipping point of where they felt they would always be below in the pecking order of the British monarchy. Prince Charles has made it clear since the 1990s that he believes in modernizing the monarchy, which would include reducing the number of royals who are dependent on the sovereign grant. The future king has placed a heavy emphasis on a core group of senior royals, including Prince William and Prince George, who are in direct line to the throne. During the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, they spoke of their confusion at the decision to not grant their son, Archie Harrison, a royal title. At the time of Archie's birth in 2019, it was announced that he would be styled as Master Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, with no royal title attached to his name. Reports at the time suggested that the couple had opted not to give him a title, in order to provide a more normal upbringing. However, the Sussexes later claimed that the decision was taken out of their hands. Under royal rules laid down by King George V in the letters patent, Archie will be entitled to become a HRH when the Prince of Wales becomes the king, and therefore he would be a grandchild of the monarch. Only Prince George, who in the direct line of succession, was originally entitled to be a prince. However, the Queen stepped in to ensure that all the Cambridge children would be on equal footing. The Duke of Edinburgh died in April at the grand old age of 99, after 73 years of being married to the British monarch. His funeral at St George's Chapel on Saturday April 17 was watched by 11 million viewers on the BBC. The new documentary was originally planned as a celebration of Prince Philip's 100th birthday. The Duke of Edinburgh died in April at the grand old age of 99, after 73 years of being married to the British monarch. His funeral at St George's Chapel on Saturday April 17 was watched by 11 million viewers on the BBC. The new documentary was originally planned as a celebration of Prince Philip's 100th birthday. The broadcasters have decided to air the programme, despite receiving a record number of complaints about their wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the April funeral. Prince Harry and Prince William will be coming together once again to honour their grandfather Prince Philip in a new documentary. The BBC produced televised documentary, titled Prince Philip, The Family Remembers, will bring the royal family in front of the camera as all eight of the Queen's grandchildren are set to pay homage to their late grandpa. The news was announced through an official press release that detailed that the special program began its production before the Duke of Edinburgh breathed his last in April. The documentary has been described as a unique portrait of the longest-serving consort in royal history with poignant recollections, plenty of humor and numerous fresh insights into the character and legacy of this royal pioneer.
According to Harper's Bazaar, the televised event will not feature the wives of Prince William and Harry, Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle. All of the Queen's children take part in the program, as well as some other members of the royal family. Interviews were recorded both before and after the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. The BBC said the documentary will capture poignant recollections, plenty of humour and numerous fresh insights into the character and legacy of this royal pioneer. The broadcasters have decided to air the programme, despite receiving a record number of complaints about their wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the April funeral. As a result, popular programmes such as the Master Chef Final, The One Show, Have I Got News For You and The Graham Norton Show were all rescheduled for another date. The move prompted a tsunami of complaints from disappointed viewers, forcing the BBC to set up a complaints board solely for backlash against the level of coverage. In a statement on its website at the time, the BBC said, We received complaints about our coverage of the funeral of HRH the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. The funeral of HRH the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh was a significant event which generated a lot of interest both nationally and internationally. We acknowledge some viewers were unhappy with the level of coverage given, and impact this had on the build BBC One schedule. We do not make such changes without careful consideration and the decisions made reflect the role the BBC plays as the national broadcaster, during moments of national significance. We are grateful for all feedback, and we always listen to the response from our audiences. A mental health campaigner who is good friends with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has candidly opened up about her bond with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Bryony e. Gordon bagged the first interview where the Duke of Sussex revealed his mental health woes four years ago. The 41-year-old became an overnight sensation when the prince revealed the trauma that his mother's death left on him when he appeared on her podcast Mad World. Ms. Gordon, who has overcome an eating disorder and alcoholism, has since also formed a close bond with Harry's wife Meghan. Speaking to OK, she revealed Meghan even asked her to take part in her 40 by 40 mentoring scheme, which aims to help women re-enter employment after the pandemic. She added, it's not crazy to me, it's just become really normal. They're just good friends. I do a lot of mentoring anyway so it was a natural fit but actually I need a mentor. I'm in desperate need of some guidance, so I'm going to have to ask her to set me up with one, for the scheme. Since attending rehab in 2017, she enjoys a calmer chaos with husband Harry Wilson and their eight-year-old daughter Edie in South London. Discussing her journey, she said, I got really unwell for the first time when I was a child and we know that around 40% of people who experience mental illness in their lives will have experienced it by the time they turn 14. You can't stop them from having that experience but you can let them know that if they do, it's normal. She added, I get a lot of comments from people saying, I wish I had your confidence, but confidence is a trick. I don't think it exists. We all have the same insecurities but I just don't have the desire to waste any more of my life hating myself. It genuinely upsets me when friends say, I wish I could just lose some weight. I guess that people do it for physical health, but a lot do it because they think they'll be more valued as humans. Luckily, my daughter very much marches to the beat of her own drum. I've always taught her that exercise is about the gains, not the losses. In early 2020, Harry said he had no choice but to leave England because of the non-stop and frequently negative coverage he and Meghan received at the hands of the British tabloids. But many critics have pointed out that Harry in particular has hardly been camera shy since arriving on North American soil. During an appearance on Good Morning America earlier this week to promote the updated Finding Freedom, reporter Will Reeve told Scobie it was hard to square the couple's earlier expressed wish for privacy when they exited royal life with their ubiquitous media presence since moving to California. The Finding Freedom Cotha clarified that Harry and Meghan never had any intention of completely bowing out of the public eye in search of privacy. It's not that they want to disappear or not be seen, he said. It's simply that they want to choose what they keep private and what they share with the world. Prince Harry longs to be something other than Prince Harry, according to a royal author, who has experience accompanying the Duke on royal duties. A new YouGov poll found that the Duke of Sussex's popularity in the UK is at the lowest it has ever been.
Just 34% of respondents held positive opinions of the prince in August, compared to 43% in April. He is among the least popular members of the royal family, although Prince Andrew was way below with just 6% of respondents stating they hold him in high regard. It doesn't get much better for Meghan Markle either dash her approval ratings dropped down to 26%, from 29 in April. The poll surveyed 1,667 adults from a range of political backgrounds and leanings. YouGov noted the Sussexes have seen their ratings fall since the Oprah Winfrey interview in March, as well as poor responses to their statements surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. Harry and Meghan, of course, quit senior royal duties last year to pursue their own respective career interests. Harry has always had a difficult relationship with the media, which was inevitably shaped by the way his mother, the Princess of Wales, was treated after she separated from Prince Charles and the circumstances around her death. Angela Levin is the author of Harry, Conversations with the Prince. After more than a year covering Harry's royal duties in 2016 and 2017, Ms. Levin took the chance to sit down with the prince. He stressed early on how he longed to be something other than Prince Harry. Ms. Levin suggested that this could perhaps contribute towards why he may sometimes seem uncomfortable in his own skin. Harry told her he wants to be ordinary, something which has been very clear for years. Ms. Levin explained, however, that Harry can never truly be ordinary. Writing in an updated copy of her book in 2019, before Harry and Meghan quit the firm, she said, his ordinariness can only be a feature while he has access to several palaces, is ferried around in limousines with blackened windows accompanied by outriders, and uses his incredible contacts to get what he wants. The top people he knows cover a wide cross-section and many do somersaults to ensure his wishes come true. The Sussexes now live in an £11 million mansion in Meghan's native California. The Duke has undergone a remarkable transformation in recent years, ridding himself of the party boy reputation he had in his youth. In a separate interview with Ms. Levin for Newsweek in 2017, Harry said he pulled his head out of the sand. He admitted he sometimes feels like he is living in a goldfish bowl but manages it much better. He stressed the role his mother played in showing him an ordinary life, taking him and William to homeless shelters, McDonald's and the high street. However, Ms. Levin wrote the public do not want Harry to be ordinary. She explained, nearly everyone he met during the time I followed him on his royal duties, especially if they were under 30, were in all that an actual prince had come to see them. Ms. Levin noted Harry's far from ordinary ability to connect with people, and his seamless capacity to ask intimate questions about the state of mind of people he had first met just moments before. Prince Harry has made a number of TV appearances since his exit from life as a senior working royal in March 2020 but none of those have been along with other members of the royal family. However, his two Oprah appearances, his bombshell interview alongside wife Meghan Markle, as well as his appearance in the mental health docuseries The Me You Can't See, both covered his trials and tribulations with the royals and his perhaps worst memories in recent times. This TV appearance will be likely to have more positive angles for the Duke of Sussex to reflect on. Prince Harry flew from the US to the UK to attend his grandfather's funeral, marking the first time he'd seen his family since making claims of racism within the firm, among a number of other revelations. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been given a higher role in the royal family due to their popularity, a royal author has claimed. William and Kate are expected to return to royal duties later this week after spending the summer holidays with their children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. And with the Queen, 95, appearing to scale down the number of engagements in her diary, William and Kate are stepping up, according to Andrew Loney the author of several historical books on the royals. He told The Express, we're in a period of what can be called a soft regency, in effect the Queen is standing back, not doing many roles. The roles that she is doing are being accompanied by Prince Charles, everyone is being prepared for Charles and Camilla. As a result, William and Kate, who seem to be very popular, are stepping into the position that Charles and Camilla had.
William and Kate are expected to return to London this week ready for the start of the new school year. Prince George and Princess Charlotte attend Thomas's school in Battersea while Prince Louis is a pupil at Wilcox Nursery in Kensington. And it will be back to work for Prince William on Thursday when he will mark Emergency Services Day. He will pay a visit to Dockhead Fire Station in South London, where he will meet emergency responders as well as members of the public, who have been lucky enough to receive life-saving support. Later that afternoon, he will hold a meeting at Kensington Palace about suicide prevention within the emergency services community. The meeting takes place ahead of World Suicide Prevention Day on Friday. It comes after reports have suggested that William and Kate are seriously considering moving to Windsor to be closer to the Queen and royal decision-making. Currently, the Cambridges divide their time between their London base of Kensington Palace, where they have their offices, and their country residence of Anmer Hall, in Norfolk, close to the Queen's Sandringham estate. But now with the older two kids at school in London, it means Anmer Hall is a long way to go at weekends. A source told the Mail on Sunday, Anmer Hall made sense while William was a helicopter pilot in East Anglia and it was useful for Christmases at Sandringham, but it doesn't really work anymore. It's a little too far away for weekends, but Windsor is a perfect compromise. They are eyeing up options in the area. Kate and William proudly dropped off their older kids at Thomas's Battersea School in London in 2019, and since then both parents have regularly handled the school run. While Kate rightly gets plenty of credit, some of those close to the couple say William's role as co-parent should not be underestimated. The Duke of Cambridge is pretty grounded as well, says a source who knows them. William and Kate's partnership is something that is incredibly important to both of them, says the source who knows the couple. Wanting to bring a good groundwork and base to family life is in her background, but it is something William has always wanted, too. That is driven as much by him as her. Fans of the Sussexes and the royal family have been united in fury as a new film about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's departure from the firm depicted a crass car crash scene infuriating viewers. The new film from US cable network Lifetime titled Harry and Meghan, Escaping the Palace, has come in for a hounding from fans of both the royal family and the Sussexes as it depicted Meghan Markle lying injured amongst the wreckage of an overturned car during a nightmare dream sequence in the opening scene of the film. Fans lashed out at the tacky and crass scene which had many similarities to the tragic car crash that killed Prince William and Prince Harry's mother Diana, Princess of Wales. Escaping the Palace opens with the bizarre dream sequence in which Harry witnesses the aftermath of the crash that claimed the life of his mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. But instead of seeing his mother lying under the wreckage, the figure involved in what fans are branding a sick depiction of the crash which killed Diana, is in fact, Meghan. Harry then immediately wakes up from this nightmare once he sees Meghan. The scene has been labelled sick and offensive as enraged viewers on both sides of the Royal Rift debate could not believe what the film's creators were thinking with the storyline. Examining the film, Monique Wright, anchor on Australian news network Sunrise slammed, it is in pretty bad taste, isn't it? While most people are on either Team Royal or Team Sussex, this film has managed to unite fans on both sides. She added, while it was just a dream, it echoed the tragic death of Princess Diana. The film sparked a ferocious backlash online as fans from both sides of the Royal Rift took to social media to express their disgust at the scene. One user added, I can't believe you allowed that car crash scene. Beyond disgusting. While others shot the film and the film's production company Lifetime movie for stooping to a new level of tastelessness. Ms. Wright stressed that the Sussexes had nothing to do with the making of the film adding they have their own commercial projects underway. The ferocious backlash comes as the film is the third in a trilogy of American-made-for-TV films about Meghan and Harry's departure from the royal family. Murray Fraser and Paris R. Fitzhenley starred in the first film, while Charlie Field and Tiffany Smith took over the roles in the sequel. In the third installment, Jordan Dean plays Prince Harry while Sidney Morton takes on the role of playing Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. The film tracks the events leading up to the infamous tell-all Oprah Winfrey interview which aired in March 2021.
Harry and Meghan, escaping the palace is yet to have a UK release date. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are said to be heading for British shores to christen the latest addition to their family, Lilibet Diana, alongside the Queen. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry reportedly want a sit-down meeting with the Queen, to discuss conducting Lilibet Diana's christening service in London. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are allegedly hoping to discuss their daughter Lilibet Diana's christening plans with the Queen, according to a royal commentator. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex welcomed their daughter on June 4, and are reportedly hoping to conduct her christening service in London. Despite the couple having stepped down as senior royals, Harry is still said to be close to his grandmother and is eager for his daughter to meet one of the most influential women in his life, with plans allegedly in the works to bring Lily to the UK. While the family no longer live in the UK after Meghan and Harry decided to forge a life outside of palace walls in California, they are said to be planning a visit back to the UK very soon. With Lily being the Queen's 11th great-grandchild, it's expected they'd want a proper religious christening ceremony for her, with the British side of the family involved. Christina Garibaldi told the Royal Us podcast, something else that is interesting, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle reportedly want to sit down with the Queen and they're hoping to discuss having Lilibet's christening in London. This is a rumoured report, who knows if it's exactly true, but it's an offer that they want to make to the Queen. Who knows if she'll accept. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex welcomed their baby daughter on Friday June 4, at 11.40 a.m. Meghan Markle gave birth at Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital, near their home in Montecito, with the baby weighing 7 pounds 11 ounces. Following their daughter's safe arrival, a spokesman for the Sussexes said that both mother and baby were safe and well, and settling in at home. The couple said they named their daughter Lilibet Lily Diana, in honor of both her grandmother and great-grandmother. Lilibet was the childhood nickname of the Queen, given to her by her parents, King George VI and the Queen Mother. As an infant, she had been unable to pronounce the name Elizabeth, which led to the endearing moniker. The middle name Diana is a tribute to Prince Harry's mother, who tragically died in a car accident when the prince was 12 years old. In a statement on their website Archul, the couple said, On June 4, we were blessed with the arrival of our daughter, Lily. She is more than we could have ever imagined, and we remain grateful for the love and prayers we've felt from across the globe. Thank you for your continued kindness and support during this very special time for our family. Buckingham Palace released a statement to say, the Queen, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been informed and are delighted with the news. Lilibet Diana is the Queen's eleventh great-grandchild and is eighth in line to the throne. As the couple are no longer working members of the royal family, the birth announcement was not delivered through traditional royal channels and no pictures of the newborn have been released to the press. After the arrival of their eldest child, Archie Harrison, on May 6, 2019, the couple had participated in a photo call at Windsor Castle. Whilst Archie's christening was a private family affair, details of the service were made public, and the royal family released a few special photographs to commemorate the occasion. Royal children are traditionally christened at Windsor by the Archbishop of Canterbury. Since the era of Queen Victoria's children, Royal newborns are baptized in the silver gilt lily font with water from the River Jordan. Other royal christenings due to take place this autumn include Princess Eugenie's son, August Philip Hawke Brooksbank. The six-month-old was due to be christened in July, however the service was postponed after a member of the congregation tested positive for COVID-19. Camilla was livid at claims Prince William could become king when the Queen dies, unearthed accounts claim. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have taken a central role in the royal family in the past 18 months, since the coronavirus pandemic sidelined older royals. They have helped fill the vacuum left by the death of Prince Philip and Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's decision to quit their role as senior members of the royal family. William and Kate are among the most popular members of the royal family and are considered crucial in maintaining the firm's relevance among younger generations. 
A new YouGov poll conducted between the 27 and the 29th of August found that William and Kate are the second and third most popular members of the royal family respectively, behind the Queen. Of the 1,667 adults surveyed 72% thought positively of the Duke of Cambridge, and 64% thought positively of Kate. In contrast, Prince Charles was the seventh most popular monarch with only 45% of those surveyed thinking positively of the Queen's son, while his wife the Duchess of Cornwall was the tenth most popular royal. In 2017 claims of a royal feud emerged after a similar survey revealed almost half of Britain's wanted Prince William to become the next monarch instead of his father Charles. Camilla was said to be enraged at the prospect of her husband, who is heir to the throne, giving up his birthright. A royal source claimed to Woman's Day in 2017, Camilla has told Charles to man up and fight. She's fuming and has told him it was his destiny to be on the throne. Camilla is livid that William could potentially take the throne, and she's pointing the finger of blame firmly on poor Kate. According to the Daily Express's royal correspondent Richard Palmer, there was tension in the palace at the time as Charles attempted to implement change in preparation of becoming king. Mr. Palmer said, tensions are mounting between staff as the monarchy prepares for life without the Queen. As courtiers oversee a gradual handover to Prince Charles and his sons, some courtiers have found their noses put out of joint amid tensions over the pace of change. It's a slightly jarring change, in contrast to the long-held view that the monarchy is in a way modelled on the design of a jar of Marmite. It changes dramatically over the years but so gradually that the change is irreplaceable. It is not the first time a rift between the Cambridges and Charles and Camilla has been reported. After a royal tour to Canada in 2011 where William and Kate attracted half a million supporters in just one day royal expert Phil Dampier claimed Charles felt overshadowed by William. Mr Dampier told The Mirror in 2011, when Charles and Camilla visited Canada two years ago they were greeted by relatively small crowds. They are in their 60s and not what you would call glamorous. Charles felt overshadowed by Diana and now it seems he feels overshadowed by their son. Some people think he is jealous. I always felt that as soon as William got married Charles would feel sidelined. Meanwhile, Prince William and Kate Middleton have long been rumoured to be moving to Berkshire to be closer to the Queen and the Duchess family in Bucklebury. A royal expert says the family could find themselves living in one of the grand apartments at Windsor Castle. The family currently live in Kensington Palace, but are thought to be set to announce their move to Berkshire soon. Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge has sparked speculation a fourth Cambridge child is on the way amid a lengthy public absence by the royal. Royal commentator Russell Myers has addressed royal fans' theories on the reasons behind the Duchess of Cambridge's absence from the pubic eye over the last two months. Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge has sparked speculation another royal baby is on the way but Myers suggested another reason for the Duchess's retreat from the spotlight. He argued that the royal couple may just be taking a well-earned rest away from the media gaze. Mr Myers told Today Australia, I think this is a few people mischief-making, asking where the royal are. Well, I can exclusively reveal probably nothing. I think that the Duchess isn't pregnant, I think that some people have been asking the question of where has Kate been? He continued, the Cambridge often go take the time out. There is normally an agreement between the press and the royals of if they are on holiday the kids don't get followed around. The photographs leave them alone during the holidays, they have been up in Norfolk. They have been chilling out, they have been up to see Granny in Scotland. The royal expert added, I think watch this space we are going to see Cambridge's back to work in the next few days. Asked if Kate would be appearing with a pregnancy bump, he replied well, I don't know, listen who knows what goes on in the royal family these days. Anything is possible after the last year we have had. But I reckon that is a bit of mischief making on a few people's parts but listen anything is possible. It comes amid reports the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have looked to make a home nearer to the Queen in Windsor, in a move that has been welcomed by royal watchers. Royal biographer Angela Levin has said Prince William and Kate's decision has likely been motivated by the fact they care very much about their family. The Cambridge's former private secretary, 
has laid bare Kate Middleton's true personality in an upcoming documentary about the royal family. In the upcoming show, set to release on September 10, Mr. Lowther Pinkerton told the Duke and Duchess have a solid bond. He said, thank God they've got each other and, a solid bond, from, these last ten years. They have a solid bond through these last ten years. If you had scoured the realm you couldn't have got a better pair, frankly. He, Prince William, has the experience of knowing where the institution sits and seeing it evolve. The Duchess brings this pragmatic awareness of what it's like to be from a decent, down-to-earth family. Kate and William celebrated their 10th wedding anniversary this year to the joy of royal fans around the world. They have three children Prince Louis, now three, has joined siblings Prince George, eight, and Princess Charlotte, six. A close friend of the couple believes William and Kate's marriage has thrived due to a lack of jealousy and friction. The source told the Times, they've got a solid relationship and she gives him confidence. There is no jealousy, no friction, they are happy for each other's successes. In a post to their Twitter account, Kate and William thanked their fans for their support in a special message to mark their 10th wedding anniversary. They wrote, We are enormously grateful for the 10 years of support we have received in our lives as a family. The couple also marked the special occasion back in April by releasing a homemade video depicting their happy life. Kate and William celebrated their 10th wedding anniversary this year to the joy of royal fans around the world. They have three children Prince Louis, now three, has joined siblings Prince George, eight, and Princess Charlotte, six. A close friend of the couple believes William and Kate's marriage has thrived due to a lack of jealousy and friction. The source told the Times, they've got a solid relationship and she gives him confidence. There is no jealousy, no friction, they are happy for each other's successes. In a post to their Twitter account, Kate and William thanked their fans for their support in a special message to mark their 10th wedding anniversary. They wrote, We are enormously grateful for the 10 years of support we have received in our lives as a family. The couple also marked the special occasion back in April by releasing a homemade video depicting their happy life. 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 A homemade video depicting